Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being with us for this prayer service, Light in the Darkness of Gun Violence. Everything that you need can be found in your worship aid, and we invite you to please sing and pray with us as you are able. And we welcome all of those who are watching us from home as well. We begin by singing God of Broken Hearts. We ask that you remain seated as we light the candles of all those who died in Uvaldes and Buffalo and right here in New York City.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. O oh, good and gracious God, we hold before you all who have died from the plague of gun violence in our land, especially those recently killed in Uvalde, Buffalo, and here in New York City. We remember all who have taken their lives with a gun, all who have died in school shootings and mass shootings, all who have died by a gun in the course of an argument or abuse or by accident or during the commission of a crime. We lift our voices in sorrow and frustration, knowing that every life reveals your presence. Receive our sisters and brothers who have died. Bless all who mourn. Strengthen us that we may bring an end to this scourge. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is one with you and the Spirit, our God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I'm just going to invite your participation. I'm going to ask just a couple of questions and then just from where you are, just to, to respond to that. So, for what do we lament? For what do we come before God and cry out? What do we confess? Just respond how you will. What do we lament? What do we bring before God this night? And what do we confess? Just from where you are, just a simple statement, a word, a phrase.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of St. Paul to the Romans. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being slain all the day. We are looked upon as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. 
For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant upon his arrival. Alleluia! 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 My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. This reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline a table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. You also must be prepared, for an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, may the Lord give you peace. Good evening. I thank you for coming, and I thank those who have joined us from home or office. It's good that we can come together, we can pray together, and we can sort of allow ourselves to be open to the grace and the presence of God in this time of incredible pain. We come for lots of different reasons. We listen to people talking about what do you lament, what do you confess, what do you hope for? So the dreams certainly are dreams of peace, of hope, an end to this senseless killing, an end to a way of life where men and women live in fear, where children aren't safe in school. And we come together this night really to pray and to be open to God's grace that helps us to be present to one another It helps us to touch the lives of those all around the globe who are so affected by the pain that we experience this night. We listen to the scripture and we sort of scratch our heads and say, Isaiah, writing hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus, has a dream that they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And that still has not come to pass for us. And What gets in the way of that? It is God's desire for us. It is God's wish for us that indeed we would live in a world where the implements of war are used for peace, are used to to nurture and to nourish, where indeed men and women would no longer train for war because there would be no need for that. And the hunger for those days, indeed, that we hear all the way back in the time of Isaiah, ripples through our own experience in this day. And out of that place, we hear the words of Paul. What can separate us from the love of God? Paul is writing in a time of distress and persecution, writing in a time when the world is falling apart. 
And he's writing about his hope and his dream and the realization that he has come to know for himself that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And the power and grace of that, no matter what is going on in our world or our lives, that God's love is the certainty for us and that we are bearers then of that love, that the world depends upon our being faithful to this. When we come to the Gospel text in Luke, and Jesus tells the disciples, be prepared for you do not know when the Son of Man will come. And that is not be prepared you don't know when you're going to die. It's be prepared because you do not know when the widow is going to come to your door. You do not know when the lonely orphan child is going to present himself or herself. You do not know when indeed the broken person is going to need someone to hold their hand. And indeed, be prepared. Be prepared to have your door and your heart open, to welcome, to be present, and simply to be with one another. To be with one another in those moments of terror, of fear, of anger, of paralysis because helplessly not knowing what do I do next? And the invitation, and Luke is the only one who tells the story in this way, for those who are prepared, the master will wait upon them. Now indeed, this is not the banquet that we hear about in Isaiah, but will be waited upon by the grace of being present to the other, by the grace of holding another person's story. We wait it upon by carrying that story that is too much for any one person to bear. And sometimes it is not even with words. It is simply being present and allowing our hearts to be open to this grace and to this gift. But it also encourages us then in standing with, in being with, in supporting, in loving, to be able to say, enough. It's time that we work for change. It's time that we insist on change, that this way of being cannot continue. We cannot sacrifice our children, our friends, our families any longer. And so we must work and allow ourselves to hear the one who comes to the door and says, do what you can do. Be open to the grace of God that moves you to act on behalf of the other, to act on your own behalf because we are all diminished. We are all lessened by these senseless deaths. All the gifts and the wonders of these children the possibilities and the potentials are gone. And we are all less because their gifts have been taken away. And so the invitation for us is certainly to trust in that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And we are to be that love of God. And then to be open, to be open to the one who knocks who seeks us out, who calls us from wherever they are around the world, saying, you have the ability to do something. You have the power to be with me, simply to hold me in this moment, and you also have the ability to speak up, to speak out, and to make your voice heard for those who can no longer speak for themselves.
I invite you to remain seated and to respond to the litany in the wake of a mass shooting. God of peace, we remember all those who were wounded or who have died this year in incidents of mass gun violence. Six dead, 12 wounded in downtown Sacramento. Give healing to the wounded and to the departed eternal rest. Let a perpetual light shine upon them. them. Ten wounded in a York City subway attack in Brooklyn. Give healing to the wounded and to the departed eternal rest. Let perpetual light shine upon them. Seventeen people wounded in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Give healing to the wounded and to the departed eternal rest. Let perpetual light shine upon them. One dead and five wounded at Geneva Presbyterian Church in Laguna Woods, California. Give healing to the wounded and to the departed eternal rest. Let perpetual light shine upon them. Two dead and three wounded in Houston, Texas flea market. Give healing to the wounded and to the departed eternal rest. Let perpetual light shine upon them. One dead and many traumatized in a New York City subway car. Give healing to the wounded and to the departed eternal rest. Let perpetual light shine upon them. Ten dead and three wounded in Buffalo, New York, in a supermarket. Give healing to the wounded and to the departed eternal rest. Let perpetual light shine upon them. Twenty-one dead and seventeen wounded in Ovalde, Texas Elementary School. Give healing to the wounded and to the departed eternal rest. Let perpetual light shine upon them. All those who have died in any incident of gun violence, give to the departed eternal rest. Let perpetual light shine upon them. For survivors of gun violence, grant them comfort and healing. Hear us, Lord. For those who have lost loved ones to gun violence, grant them peace. Hear us, Lord. For those first responders who care for victims of gun violence, protect and strengthen them. Hear us, Lord. O oh Lord, we remember all whose lives have been ended or shattered by gun violence. We give you thanks for calling us together tonight. We pray that our country may realize the horror of gun violence and work toward peace and freedom from fear. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we become overwhelmed by the tragedies that surround us. We grieve the loss of life, of innocence, of trust. We seek healing and hope. We seek the grace to comfort all who mourn. As we began our service, we noted things for which we lament, things we confess, things we hope for. 
In the Church's sacrament of healing, we are strengthened to be about that kind of transformation. And so I invite those who wish to be anointed for healing to come forward. The all ill the sick is blessed that we might find strength and courage in our lives. And as you come forward, we'll anoint your hands, so have your hand open for us. And then uh, if you just pray for the person who's right ahead of you. So sort of keep your focus not simply on yourself, but on praying for the person who is in front of you. When pain or sorrow is too much to bear When your heart feels numb, unable to care When faith seems so pointless that you cannot pray when no one knows quite what to say Then hold on Hold on To find a way to get through And when you're home And you can't hold on We will hold on to you If God is silent when There's no wind inside, no all that is wrong can still be made right. You're never alone, God has promised to be with us even when we can't see. Having been anointed, we join with all who mourn. 
We are empowered to act as a community of faith, to end the violence throughout, through our witness and our encouraging of our legislators to act to create a safe environment for all. We cry with our sister Rachel of the scripture and lament the loss of so many lives. Thus says Yahweh, a voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refuses to be comforted, for her children are no more. God, comforter of the broken and disheartened, we come to you plagued with an agonized grief after yet one more outbreak of senseless gun violence. We come to you from east to west, from north to south, people of all ages, ethnicities, and walks of life. We represent one voice, the voice of bitter weeping echoing throughout our cities and resounding in communities throughout the world. As violence abounds, we sit in the darkness, sitting alongside the suffering on the mourner's bench. We are Rachel, mourning with wordless sobs the lives of those sacrificed on the altar of violence. We are Rachel, weeping for the wounded, for those whose minds and bodies are etched with painful memories of humanity's unjustifiable rage. We are Rachel, lamenting with the families who have lost loved ones, whose cries of despair join with those from tragedies of gun violence. We are Rachel, perplexed with troubled souls and searching for answers, seeking to understand what would cause humans to inflict pain on their sisters and brothers. We are Rachel, exasperated, grasping, crying out, how long, O oh God, will this violence consume your people? We are Rachel, how long, O oh God, must we succumb to this perverse violence that crushes the breath and life of countless innocent people? How long, O oh God, will it take for us to beat our swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks? Compassionate God, we turn to you in our grief. Provide comfort to the brokenhearted all who are frightened, despairing, and hoping for peace. Help us to become deeply aware of the shared humanity that comes when a sister or brother falls victim to violence. Guide us on the path of understanding and peaceful dialogue. Show us rightful ways to rid our homes, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our cities, and our world of weapons that destroy lives. Grant us the courage to stand together, to join with Rachel in her strident protest of lament, calling for an end to gun violence. Empower us, O oh God, to be people of light and hope. Amid a world painted with darkness and violence, we ask this through Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Lord be with you. May God give us the peace, the grace to grow, 
in love. May we know the blessing of walking the way of the cross, giving ourselves in love for all you love. May we remember that the world is too dangerous for anything but your truth and too small for anything but your love. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. Thank you again for coming. There is a place for the sadness Hold on to love There is a season of gladness Hold on to love When pain and confusion seem endless Hold on to love We cultivate healing Hold on to love Hold on to love when where hope is found Hold on to love where joy abounds Hold on to love where grace and mercy is overflowing Hold on to love
Thank you.